Hello, and welcome to 12-Minute Meditation, a weekly podcast from mindfulandmindful.org that offers mindfulness meditations backed by neuroscience. If you've been practicing, you know that 12 minutes of meditation a day can yield benefits like increased attention, focus, creativity, calm, resilience, and compassion. The latest scientific research supports this knowledge. So, on this podcast, we invite you to do your 12-minute practice with guided meditations from today's leading mindfulness experts. There's a new practice each week and a new way to experience some of those benefits day to day. I'm Chelsea Arsenal, Director of Advertising at MindfulAndMindful.org. And this week, Elaine Smukler invites us to explore a meditation for navigating grief anniversaries, a practice that gently supports us in honoring and processing our feelings during these tender times. Grief anniversaries often bring a resurgence of emotions and memories, some of which can be painful and difficult to manage. This meditation creates a compassionate space where you can acknowledge these feelings without judgment fostering a sense of acceptance and self-compassion. During this practice, you'll be guided to visualize your thoughts and emotions as waves on the ocean, allowing them to rise and fall naturally. This imagery helps you to observe your feelings without becoming overwhelmed by them. Elaine encourages you to treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding you would offer a dear friend, promoting a deep sense of self-compassion. Expect to find a sense of release as you let go of guilt, regrets, and self-criticism. This meditation emphasizes that grief is a natural and essential part of life's journey, and it's okay to feel what you feel. By embracing your emotions with compassion, you can find moments of peace and healing. Through this meditation, you will learn to honor your emotions, treat yourself with kindness, and find a compassionate way to navigate through your grief. Let this be a time to connect deeply with yourself, offering comfort and solace, and emerging with a renewed sense of peace and understanding. Alongside today's Navigating Grief Meditation, we're thrilled to highlight the relaunch of Elaine Smukler's engaging video course, Get Started with Mindfulness. Perfect for beginners and those looking to deepen their practice, this lively course offers a step-by-step guidance to help you love your life more have more fun, and be more present in body and mind. Elaine Smugler has been a mindful practitioner for over 20 years and is a mindfulness teacher and registered psychotherapist to individuals and corporate clients. You can subscribe to 12-Minute Meditation while you're on mindful.org or wherever you find your favorite podcast. And if you're moved to leave us a review, we'd be grateful. And so will other listeners. See, your review helps them to decide whether 12-minute meditation is for them. But, for now, for you, here's Elaine Smugler. It's coming around again. death anniversaries, birthdays, Holidays and other notable dates can feel like menacing threats waiting to jump out of the bushes and snatch away any hope of well-being. Short of starting your own calendar and ignoring the passage of time, how can you face those terribly timed Facebook memories that remind you that what once was will never be again? Recently, as I approached the month that signals the anniversary of my husband's death, I noticed sticky thoughts trapping me in the shadowlands. My thoughts kept dragging me back to those final weeks and days of his life, looping the worst bits over and over, etching all my shortcomings into my sensitive skin. If only I had ordered the Chinese food he asked me for before he was too sick to eat anything. If only I could have found a way to sleep beside him in that chair in the hospice for more than just two days. How horribly I betrayed him by imagining I needed to sleep in my own bed, 
and get me some alone time so that I could make it back to the hospice the next day for another marathon of sitting in a chair doing not much else except watching his life drain away. I should have been there morning, noon, and night for my beloved. But I wasn't. These are the kinds of thoughts that I tried kicking to the curb, but no matter how forcefully I tell them to get lost, joke's on me. Grief keeps coming back for seconds. A year later, I look back on those days, and at times I still feel confusion and regret and find myself praying for forgiveness and hunting for any kind of life raft that might help me feel like I wasn't just the worst person ever because I hadn't been able to prevent the cancer from overtaking the dear one who had made my life a garden of happiness for just shy of 25 years. And then, just when I couldn't have felt more alone, an amazing thing happened. I discovered that I was not the only person who had ever lost something. Who knew? In fact, the more people I talked to, the more obvious it became that the Mourners Club was much bigger than I ever imagined. Loss of pets, parents, partners, possibilities. Grief was freaking everywhere. There was so many secret souls marking off dates that brought memories of pain. How could there be so much suffering when it seemed like no one ever talked about it? I thought everyone else was good as gravy, but it turns out that there are others who feel that guilt and sadness are guests that might leave, only to return again and again. My search for remedies unearthed something called self-compassion. Maybe this was the shiny carrot that might keep away all the oozy, cruddy stuff from sucking me into the bog of despair. Self-compassion sounded pretty good. But in practice, loving yourself when you feel like poop might seem a hell of a lot harder than simply pithing your own brain and living life as a happily lobotomized robot. And what is self-compassion? If you keep investigating, you might discover that ideas about self-compassion are not, in fact, the same as actually having compassion for yourself. What does actual compassion look like? And what does it do to help with this climb up doom mountain? When we actually turn towards ourselves with the deep understanding that comes from having been there for every moment of our own movie, we help calm the protective threat response that wants to defend against more hurt. If we choose to be awake to life, we'll see that pain and loss are part of what's on the menu and can't be dodged. It's totally not a problem. It's just reality. Great. And then what? Prepare for the difficult days by being curious about what is swirling in your body and mind. Pay attention. You are the primary caretaker of you. Honor your right to love and feel what you have lost while loving what you still have, remembering that the most significant thing that you still have is the beautiful one known as you. Yeah. Really. We engage self-compassion to bring some ease to the nervous system. Self-compassion can potentially offer an instantly soothing response for the effects of emotional overwhelm. Self-compassion offers intentional thinking to help settle the whirling mind that might be helplessly trapped in a story focused on the negative. It's okay to feel sad. It's going to happen even if you don't feel it's okay. But if you want to suffer a little bit less, you can challenge the mental mayhem and focus on being here now. You can remind yourself that every second of your life, there is always another dazzling new experience just waiting for you to look up as soon as you can, offering you a fresh start every moment. Try these tips when grief makes you feel like dog vomit. Number one, ground control to Major Tom. 
make contact with yourself. It's kind of scary feeling all alone in suffering. Notice how it feels if you can offer yourself some real old-timey kindness, which might include saying to yourself, Hey, buddy, this hurts like a son of a bee. It's okay. I gotcha. What do you notice if you outrageously remind yourself that this is really hard? It's not your imagination. What happens if you cut yourself some slack? Number two. Chemistry 101. We are not only made of Funyuns. Beyond those deliciously onion-flavored rings, or maybe because of them, you are ruled by chemistry. When you offer yourself affectionate physical touch, your body barks like a happy puppy. Go ahead. Give yourself a little lovin' to help release the ooey-gooey goodness of oxytocin sometimes known as the bonding chemical. You can do this by giving yourself a self-hug or an arm squeeze. You can place a comforting hand on your upper chest or cradle your face. Do some experimenting and see if making a positive physical connection with yourself helps you feel a little less like you want to jump out of your own skin. Trying this out can be especially good when you're pretty sure that nobody loves you no more. Newsflash, you gotta love you. How? Like the song goes, try a little tenderness. Number three. Watch out for the thoughts that have hell ride tattooed on them. Those thoughts will convincingly remind you that your pathetic inability to control everything, oh, especially bad things, is obviously a personal failing. Loser. Newsflash number two. Not all thoughts are facts, even the ones that tell you that they are. Mostly thoughts roll on habit loops. When these loops make you loopy, recognize that they are probably a not-so-nice retelling of the past or predicting a dark future. Past. Future. The antidote. Be here now. You can do this by noticing you're hooked into a storyline. Then, using effort and energy, intentionally shift your attention to anchor in the so-called present moment by connecting with your immediately experienced senses, like touch. For instance, bring your attention to some neutral part of your body, like your shoulders, or the tip of your nose, or feel yourself rooted to the ground, or held by your chair. Shifting away from the script of the horror show into the now, even for a moment, can be enough to help free you from the agony you're feeling trapped by. Thank you for joining us for this episode of 12 Minute Meditation from Mindful and Mindful.org. I hope you enjoyed practicing with us today. We'll be back in seven days with another meditation practice to enrich your journey. In the meantime, stay connected by signing up for our free newsletter at mindful.org slash sign up for compelling insights and actionable ideas to enrich your everyday life. That's M-I-N-D-F-U-L dot O-R-G slash S-I-G-N-U-P.